Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good evening everyone. So let's begin our class with Umur Kitab Al-Fatihah. Okay, can you see my slide? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Boleh nampak tak dia terpotong eh? Boleh nampak sampai bawah eh? Nampak. Okay. Uh, thank you. So, uh, Okay, so kalau ikutkan, okay, today uh, we'll continue with the subtopic 5.4, determining enthalpy of reactions delta H. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but before that, okay, I will maybe, uh, we have some uh, recap first, okay, what you have learned uh, last week. Okay, the calorie meter. Okay, so uh, the very basic or the very important points that you need to know for the calorie meter is that uh, this calorie meter is divided into two, okay, we have constant volume and also constant pressure calorie meter. So for constant volume, we call it as POM calorie meter, while constant pressure, it is a coffee cup calorie meter, yeah. Okay, so uh, for this both uh, uh, calorie meter, okay, basically you have very uh, basic uh, equation where you have uh, maybe kita letak kat sini lah. The very basic is when Q system is equals to zero. Because we assume that uh, this system is an isolated system where um, there is, uh, there are no heat transfer or metal transfer. Meaning that dia akan kekal dekat dalam tu lah. Okay, dia tak ada transfer to surrounding. Okay, kita assume macam tu lah. So that's why the Q system is equals to zero. So uh, in that particular system we have the reaction okay so the reaction is of course the chemical reaction itself and then we have the calorimeter okay the device that hold or the device that uh, for the reaction takes place okay so the calorimeter and also let's say if you are using water or even you are using solution you have to add QH2O or Q solution okay we in general lah but some times okay uh, some cases ada juga case yang dia tak ada there's no uh, uh, no information at all for the water or solution so yang ada cuma calorie meter saja so you can just use that the q ration okay negative q ration is equals to q calorie meter okay same goes to the uh, kalau let's say you have uh, information on the uh, only for the solution. For example here uh, dalam coffee cup calorie meter. Okay selalunya the value of the calorie meter is very small. Thus it uh, value apa? Value heat capacity. Thus bila dia sangat kecil sampai kita boleh abaikan. So negligible. So that's why biasanya kita just refer the Q ration is equal to the Q solution. Okay. So nak suruh you ingat macam mana cara uh, Kita tak ada specific equation for a uh, specific uh, apa? Uh, method lah. So kat situ you can refer to the information given in the question. Okay. So I uh, according to you punya tutorial. Saya tengok uh, mostly you all boleh buat lah. Just that saya notice um, uh, both classes eh. Uh, you all still are not really uh, particular on the sign. Okay, so because we know that because, uh, okay, your original you put as Q system equals to Q water, Q cal, Q ration equals to zero. So, biasa kita akan letak kat depan negative Q reaction is equals to apa-apa-apa. So, tak kisahlah Q sol plus Q cal limiter ke or Q cal limiter saja ke. So, need this negative you should add in. Okay, so biasanya even though uh, kita tahu lah dia exo or endo, automatically that value akan uh, follow through according to the mathematical punya uh, cara. So kalau ikut matematik negatif ni, kalau jawapan akhir dia negatif dia akan keluar negatif. Kalau uh, jawapan akhir dia positif, endo dia akan keluar positif. You jangan tiba-tiba kat atas tu negatif, you tak letak tiba bawah dia negatif. Ha, mana datang? 
Okay, to take note on uh, for that part lah. Okay, sama juga case. Um, kat atas tu sebenarnya negatif dia tak ada. Eh sorry, dia ada negatif tiba-tiba kat bawah hilang. Uh, so, kalau dia hilang maksudnya akan ada yang kita boleh cancel. Yang menyebabkan dia akan hilang. The value of negative. Okay, so please take note on this uh, sign eh. Okay, so uh, itu untuk calorie meter. Okay, so now we are moving to the new uh, subtopic lah. Okay, 5.4. Determining the enthalpy of fractions. Okay, basically before this, normally enthalpy of fraction, uh, kita specific, kita ada formation, combustion, neutralization. Yang itu senang. Maksudnya, uh, tapi itu dia terhad. It's limited to that. Macam formation, limited to formation je lah. Kalau combustion, untuk combustion saja, and then Uh, and also limited to only one mole. Okay, referring to kalau uh, formation, one mole of product. Kalau combustion, one mole of uh, reactants, right? Okay, but here we can determine enthalpy of reaction to others, other reactions, okay? And we are, uh, for 5.4 is using direct method. Okay, so basically we have two methods actually to determine uh, to determine the enthalpy of fractions okay we have direct method and also indirect method so for this indirect method you will learn in the next subtopic which is 5.5 okay so for direct method okay kita guna formula kalau direct method eh where the enthalpy of fraction is equals to the sum of the uh, uh, on enthalpy formation of the products okay you subtract with the enthalpy formation of the reactants Okay, and mesti ada N. What is N? N is the coefficient from the equation. Okay, nanti saya akan tunjuk lah. While for the indirect method, basically uh, we'll be using Hassel's law. Okay, I hope you still remember uh, you have done the experiment. Okay, the second experiment yang you buat sebelum ni. Hassel's law, determine the uh, enthalpy formation of magnesium oxide. Okay, ah, uh, yang you buat masa eksperimen tu, ah, uh, ni yang kita baru nak belajar hari ni. Okay, chap, uh, subtopic 5.5. Okay, so this is a uh, direct method and this direct method, we have uh, two uh, method according to the Hassel's law, Hassel's law where you have algebraic method and also energy cycle method. Okay, so kita pergi pada direct method dulu. Okay, so the standard entropy is the entropy change. Okay, entropy change occurs in the system when the substance is transformed by a chemical reaction under standard condition. Bila kita mention about standard, so of course, you punya condition must be in standard jugalah. And this standard entropy reaction is related to entropy of formation. Okay, formation of what? Reactants and also products. Okay, for example, let's say you have the equation AA plus BB produce CC plus DD. So, a, uh, uh, apa? the letter, the small letter here is um, related or indicates that it is a coefficient of the reaction. After you dah balance kan, coefficient dia, ah, itu sangat penting. That's why for this direct method, you have to make sure that the question, uh, sorry, the equation must be balanced. Okay, so the enthalpy of fraction is the, tadi, formula, uh, the sum of the enthalpy uh, formation of product subtract with the sum of enthalpy formation of reactant. So basically, N ni adalah coefficient tadi kan. So C, you multiply with C. And then ada C dengan D kan, product. So D plus D multiply with D. And then minus, okay, subtract with the value for the reactant. Okay. So product tolak reactant. Uh, basically, nama pun direct method. So dia punya ni adalah direct. And dia mesti enthalpy of formation. Okay, dia tak boleh enthalpy lain. So, kita tengok contoh. Okay, for example, you have this um, uh, equation C2H2 ni plus O2, okay, this is combustion of acetylene, okay. So, if you look at this, dia nak you calculate the enthalpy change. So, what is the delta H for this uh, reaction? Okay, and kalau dia bagi soalan macam ni, dia akan given. Of course, dia akan bagilah, takkan you nak hafal kan unless value tu is very common. Macam formation of aluminium, you tahulah value dia kosong kan sebab standard element. Kalau ada um, molecule of course kita tak, kita tak ingat lah terlalu banyak kan. So dia akan bagi. Given, uh, nampak kat sini. The first one is carbon uh, plus H2 produce C2H2. If you look at this, 
what is the meaning by standard and uh, what is the meaning by standard entropy of formation when one mole of substance one mole betul tak one mole okay is formed from its standard element so betul tak this one is standard element betul lah kan carbon and hydrogen dalam bentuk gas so betul so this is entropy formation okay and this one is entropy formation for co2 this one is entropy formation of water so okay basically semua dia bagi dalam bentuk entropy formation Now, kita tahu uh, uh, entropy of reaction tadi is basically product tolak reaction kan. So, this is product. On this side is reaction. Okay. So, CO2 power 4. So, CO2 ada tak entropy formation dia? Ada here. Second equation. H2O ada tak? Ada. The third equation. Okay. So, tolak reaction. Now, reaction we have CH2 ada juga kat sini. How about oxygen? So oksigen dia tak bagi kan? So macam mana nak cari tak tak bagi? Kita sedangkan kita bukan oksigen, kita nak entropy reaction. Now refer back to the definition of entropy formation. What is the value of entropy formation of element? So the value of formation is equals to zero. Okay. So that's why ada certain soalan lah. Uh, kalau dia standard element, biasanya value ni, value kosong ni, dia tak akan bagi not given. So sebab dia macam common sangat, dia assume you all mesti tahu. Macam tak kisahlah hydrogen ke, carbon ke. So all of this value mesti zero. Yang penting dia standard. Standard maksudnya dalam keadaan kalau tiba-tiba saya kata carbon ni liquid, ah dia tak standard lah. Where carbon supposedly yang standard dalam bentuk solid graphite. Right? Ah value dia kosong. So ada semua value kan? Boleh kira kan? So to calculate this one, Okay, by using this formula, product tolak return eh, formation. So, you darat lah water, eh, sorry, uh, carbon dioxide darat 4, H2O2 tolak, C2H2 ada 2, so O2 ada 5. So, you masukkan the value, so you nampak kat sini. What, uh, oxygen, 5 mole times 0. Okay, so you just total upkan and then tolakkan, you akan dapat the value. So, this is the... Uh, entropy reaction for for this equation. Okay? So, sebab macam equation macam ni kan, macam mana kita nak cari kan, uh, takkanlah every time you nak kena buat eksperimen. So, that's why uh, you boleh dapatkan uh, this value from several uh, several equations. When you combine, you akan dapat balik uh, jawapan yang sama. Okay. So, uh, okay. Cuba Jawab ni, checkpoint 14. Okay, nitric acid. Okay, dia nak entropy of reaction. Dia bagi, dia bagi dalam bentuk table. So, this is the formula, equation. So, dia nak this, what is the delta H for this equation. And then, ah, kalau kat sini you perasan oxygen dia bagi the value zero. Sometimes dia tak bagi, kalau dia bagi, Alhamdulillah syukur. <laughs> Kod tak bagi, uh, you have to remember lah the value is zero. Cuba kira, dapat tak? Sama. Okay, kalau ikutkan, tolak je lah kan. You darabkan dengan coefficient je. Cuba tengok eh, check jawapan. Okay, product minus return eh. So, this is product. On this side is product. Okay, 4 and 6. And on this side, uh, return lah. So, 4 dengan 5. So, oksigen dia tadi kosong kan. Okay, so you tambahkan tu. Paling senang, settlekan dulu uh, one side, tolak dengan another side. Okay. So, you dapat jawapan. So, far clear eh. Uh, direct method, you just uh, masukkan, uh, uh, substitute the data, 
uh, into the equation. Yang penting you faham kalau direct method dia akan bagi dalam bentuk formation. Selain benda formation tak boleh. You tak boleh guna cara direct method. You can dia guna cara lain. Where cara itu kita namakan the indirect method where uh, nama dia has a slot. Okay. Kalau direct method cuma tadi saya repeat eh. Kalau direct method uh, you just uh, use uh, enthalpy formation to get the uh, enthalpy of fraction. Tapi kalau uh, information given ada yang uh, bukan formation. So you tak boleh guna cara tu lah. You have to use a uh, hazard law. Why uh, the enthalpy change cannot be determined directly. Okay. So kalau kita cerita lah sebenarnya kat sini. It is impossible to measure delta H for every reaction in which we are interested. So the reaction cannot, be take, cannot take place in laboratory. So basically macam saya cakap tadi lah. Dia tak logik kalau macam setiap uh, reaction yang you nak Okay nak campur ni, nak campur ni, nak campur ni dapat produk apa You nak kira delta H It's not, it's impossible Tak logik because maknanya you have to prepare many calorie meters Calorie meter you kena pakai banyak untuk you just to measure the delta H But sometimes the reaction uh, cannot uh, take place in the lab Okay so macam mana dia nak uh, So macam mana kita nak cari uh, menggunakan cara ni lah Cara ni maksudnya, uh, in this case, okay, saya so explain dulu lah. Since hydrogen is state function, okay, basically this point supposedly kita explain in the earlier part. I'm not sure why they are, um, I mean for this notes, dia tak explain. Uh, basically sebab saya punya notes yang lama, kita ada explain. Sebab dia introduction lah, H is state function. Apa itu state function? Where paling senang saya suka cakap sini The value of data H is independent of the pathway Okay, analogi dia Contoh kita nak balik kampung Saya nak balik kampung Saya duduk kat Selangor, saya nak balik Perak Okay, for example So, uh, Selangor is our uh, initial state So, nak balik balik Perak is uh, final state Okay, so if you open your waist Buka waist or Google map Ada a few suggestion You nak ikut jalan mana Okay, let's see lah the main uh, main road yang patutnya kita pakai adalah highway lah for example highway uh, plus Okay, tapi kita ada jalan lain kan So, kat situ independent of the pathway The value of delta H ataupun value maksudnya daripada initial nak sampai ke uh, final tu Okay, dia punya delta H tu sama Okay, that's why dia kata independent of the pathway Tak kisahlah you ikut Ikut jarak dekat ke, ikut jarak jauh ke You tetap sampai tempat yang sama Okay, so that's why kita You boleh relatekan balik dengan this delta H This means that in going from a particular set of rectangles to products Okay, daripada rectangle you nak form products The delta H is the same Value of delta H tu sama Whether the reaction takes place in one step or in a series of steps Maksudnya satu satu step je You dapat dah Uh, product daripada rectan per product satu lagi uh, daripada rectan lagi product tu ada you kena okey dapat product lain dulu daripada product lain you tambah dengan benda lain you baru dapat balik produk yang you betul-betul nak ha, itu series of steps kan tapi the value of delta H sebenarnya sama maknanya mungkin yang banyak step tu you tambah 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 you dapat balik delta H yang straight tu itu maksud dia eh So uh, we can estimate this delta H using publish value Maksudnya value tu kena dah ada lah Tak boleh macam semua value tak ada uh, You tak boleh, you kena dapatkan that value dulu Dia dah automatically dah ada Barulah kita boleh just total up or sum up lah Okay So that's why dia kata it's, it's not necessary to make color metric measurement for all reactions Tak logik lah kan Okay so this principle is known as Hess's law Okay ini yang you buat masa eksperimen tu lah Okay, so this has a law state that the enthalpy change for the overall overall equation equals to the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual step. Ni yang saya cakap tadi, you have uh, satu step saja sama dengan you ada banyak-banyak step, you tambahkan yang banyak tu, you dapat balik yang satu tu. Okay, so that's why uh, enthalpy for uh, overall is equals to seberapa banyak pun step yang you ada, you tambahkan. Okay, and we have two method, algebraic method and also energy cycle method. Here, um, uh, I nak, maybe I can emphasize that I I prefer uh, using this method, algebraic method. So, but be before this, the last uh, 
Sebab saya last start, uh, last uh, stop mengajar Before saya cuti hari tu, 2000 Kan 2020 lah, 2017 So uh, saya tak familiar with this method But basically bila saya tengok balik The method is basically uh, almost similar to the algebraic method And also born habit cycle yang you akan belajar lepas ni Okay so tak apa saya akan explain dua-dua Tapi personally I prefer this method lah Algebraic method eh Algebraic method ni apa yang saya pernah tunjuk dekat you Masa lab session Okay kita tengok contoh Consider the oxidation carbon to form carbon monoxide. Okay, for example, this is your target equation. I mean, ini yang you nak cari. Nak cari apa? Nak cari delta H. Delta H reaction dia. Apa? Berapa delta H dia? Okay, of course, again, dia sama juga macam direct method. Dia akan uh, give uh, a few sets of uh, equation. Okay, yang, yang related tapi not exactly the same lah. Kalau exactly the same, itu jawapan kan? Okay, so for example equation 1 We have CO plus half O2 produce CO2 So this is the value and then equation 2 pun sama lah ada value dia So calculate the enthalpy change of fraction for the above fraction So your target is here Okay, benda pertama yang you nak tengok Okay, uh, ni uh, saya explain using algebraic method dulu eh First you tengok, okay ada tak carbon graphite dekat equation 1 or 2 You have to find where Sebab ini target you, you tak boleh ubah target you Okay, this is your target equation Or your main equation, you tak boleh ubah So, C graphite, C lah, okay, carbon Must be on the left side and mole dia kat sini satu Okay, so yang ada berkenaan is in equation number two Sama kan? And here, dia one mole and dia juga on the left side So, equation two akan kekal So, remain as it is. Tak payah ubah. Okay, how about oxygen? Now oxygen uh, is rather difficult because you have oxygen at equation 1 and also equation 2. Okay, so normally mana yang saya akan buat benda ni last kali bila dia ada banyak dekat banyak equation saya, saya susah nak tengok kan so biasa saya akan buat last kali. Biasanya bila kita buat last kali automatically dia akan follow. Okay, akan follow through. So okay, how about CO? CO there's no CO in equation 2 but there's one CO in equation 1. Okay, ada CO kan? How about mole? Mole here is one mole, equation 1 also one mole. Okay, it's just that the location of the CO uh, for both eh, are different. One is on the right side, the product and one is on the left side, red third. So, siapa nak ikut siapa? Of course, you have to uh, follow the target. Target you, you nak CO as the product. So this equation 1, you must reverse. Reverse the equation. So that CO from red turn will become product. Okay, when you reverse the equation, what will happen to the enthalpy? Enthalpy also will be reverse and become positive value. Okay, clear eh? So, ah, ni tadilah saya mention. First step, set the target. Okay, this is your target. Step uh, number two, uh, masa ni lah tengok tadi kan Ni ada, ni ada, ni ada kan uh, Tapi tengok uh, for uh, CO Yang O tu ni kita tak payah tengok pun lah Last kali dia akan follow through For CO now, bila you tengok pada equation yang sebelum ni CO duduk kiri, kita nak ke kanan kan dia So bila you ke kanan kan dia You have to reverse the equation Right, so the value will become Positif. So in this case kebetulan mol dia uh, satu, satu-satu. Target target uh, equation mol dia satu dalam apa series of fraction pun mol dia satu. So you tak perlu nak ubah apa-apa. But if you have uh, like different uh, coefficient, you must multiply. Okay, the amount or mol and also the tahej by the same factor. Kalau you dah equation tu you dah dapat tiga. Delta H pun kena darab tiga. Kalau equation tu you bahagi ke, Delta H pun kena bahagi. Okay? So clear eh? So biasanya bila you dah buat tu, kita akan tulis balik supaya you akan nampak. Okay? So we know that for the CO2 ni, tadi kita terbalikkan kan? Equation 1, CO2 akan duduk di depan kan? So ini kita dah reverse tadi. So that's why you dapat positive. And then for the second part is remain Allah. 
remain. Okay, so after that, this is your target. Apa kita nak buat? Cancel, okay, all the substances except those in the target equation. Maksudnya kat sini target you ada C graphite. So yang ni tak boleh cancel. Memang tak boleh pun sebab dia ada satu. Biasanya apa yang ada satu dia akan kekal lah. Okay. For example here CO2 boleh cancel dengan CO2. CO memang ada dalam soalan right. Okay. Half O2 this is O2. Okay. So half O2 okay. Yang ni reactant ni product. So boleh cancel. Okay. Nak cancel mesti reactant dengan product. Kalau reactant dengan reactant jadi apa? Dia jadi tambah. Product dengan product pun jadi tambah. Okay, so here we have half O2, this is one O2. So you boleh tolakkan, dia tak boleh cancel tapi you boleh tolakkan. Ini akan habis, this O2 will become half. Okay, that's why dalam jawapan you akan dapat half O2. And then how about this uh, entropy of reaction? Uh, you just total up, okay, you sum up, you have positive value for equation 1, you have negative value for equation 2, then you total, you dapatlah value dia. Okay, I hope you stay. Yeah, uh, remember lah on uh, this part. Walaupun uh, dah lama lah juga eh. Kita dah lah awal-awal lagi kan masa tu. Tentang-tentang saya rasa masa saya ada chapter 1 ke chapter 2 eh. Okay. So, uh, step yang, uh, sorry step pula. Method yang lagi satu when we call it as uh, energy cycle method. Okay, basically uh, energy cycle dalam bentuk diagram. Uh, okay, showing how three or more reaction is interconvertible. Dia boleh convert lah ke mana-mana. For example, uh, you tengok lah diagram ni eh. Kita tahu tadi uh, A kepada B. Uh, kita ikut highway kan. So daripada Selangor kepada Perak. So ini jalan dia. Kita assume lah this is the main road. Okay, so from here you boleh juga ikut. Okay, ni lurus kan. You boleh juga ikut jalan jauh sikit. Akhirnya you sampai balik kat B. Where from A you dapat produce C dulu. After C you produce B. Maknanya you are still akan dapat produk yang sama. So delta H1 value yang ini okay basically are equals to the delta delta H2 plus delta H3. Okay. So to construct the energy cycle you have to find a, uh, uh, two conditions must be satisfied. First two of the equation have the same product. Okay macam ni kan contoh A kepada B, C kepada B. Two daripada situ ada same product lah so you, supaya you boleh link kan. And then two out of three equation have non energy change. Maksudnya tak boleh lah semua tak ada value macam ni nak kira betul tak? Mesti kalau tiga dua, dua yang kita tahu. Kalau empat tiga kita tahu. At least macam tu lah. Okay so ikut contoh soalan tadi kita guna contoh yang sama. So this is your target equation right? Okay, so based on this target, okay, you boleh uh, uh, illustrate here ataupun draw kat sini eh. C graphite plus half O2 produce CO so this is entropy of fraction. Okay, from C, okay, kita tahu dia tambah dengan oksigen dapat CO2. So this is actually equation number two. Okay, and then Equation 1 CO plus half O2 produce CO2. So CO plus half O2 produce CO2. So error dia ke sini. So this value is negative. Okay remember dia punya pergerakan dia is yang ini ke sini ataupun you patah balik naik balik ke sini kan. So error dia akan one way dia tak akan patah balik tu tak. So kalau yang ni pasal error dia ke sini tiba-tiba error ni ke sini. So this part kita kena terbalikkan. Sebab and at the end kita mesti dapat produk dia CO. Okay, so that's why you nampak ah uh, this is the um, apa illustration dia letters lah. So from carbon uh, plus oxygen you produce CO2. So from this CO2 plus half O2 produce CO. So arrow dia ke bawah lepas tu dia terus pergi kat CO. Okay, so sebab tu bila you tukar arrow so this value will become positive. So basically sebenarnya kalau awak tengok balik sama je lah you buat untuk Hess's law kan. For me lah that's why I say personally lah I like to use uh, Hess's law sebab dia macam main puzzle juga kan. So dia macam susun-susun oh dapat sama. Lepas tu cancel mana yang tak nak. Okay. Kalau sini macam you kena betul-betul ada understanding to make sure yang error tu betul. And I make sure error tu betul lepas tu kalau dia terbalik-terbalik tu dia kena tukar sign. Uh, tu a little bit 
difficult lah for me Okay, tapi once you dah faham, you, oh, tak ada masalah lah So that's why you akan dapat sebenarnya similar answer, right? Negatif 110.5 eh Ah, uh, ni ada soalan Yes uh, Dia, kalau dalam soalan dia ada mention tak kita kena guna cara apa? Uh, setakat yang saya uh, tahulah eh Indirect method dia takkan cakap Tapi uh, If uh, I'm not uh, I'm not sure about 2018 and 2019 But if I'm not mistaken So far saya mengajar daripada 2011 Dia cuma Dia akan cakap calculate the entropy of fraction Sebab tadi Tadi je kita dah ada dua One we have direct Another one we have indirect Kan direct indirect Kat sini even kat sini pun sometimes kita akan cakap Using direct uh, uh, Apa uh, Direct method uh, Calculate the entropy of fraction Biasanya you kena faham sendiri. Direct maksudnya mesti ada entropy formation. Kalau entropy formation tak ada, you have to use indirect. And for me, tak pernah lagi saya jumpa yang indirect ni ditanya pula guna algebraic method ke atau guna cycle. Okay? But let's say lah kita, saya duduk cakap tak boleh, tak, tak ada, tak ada, tiba-tiba tahun awak ada ke kan? Uh, kalau ada, uh, you have to use uh, this method lah. Energy cycle method. Hopefully tak adalah, doa tak adalah sebab um, even I think if I look uh, at the previous book, even international book pun mostly uh, akan guna this one. Kalau you faham betul-betul sebenarnya, this energy cycle method basically adalah still algebraic method cuma dia dia tunjuk dalam bentuk cycle. Sebab at the end, you akan ubah uh, positif ni sama juga you ubah kat dekat apa Algebraic method kan? You ubah value, you reverse kan the equation. So for me, sama tapi dia terjemahkan dalam bentuk uh, cycle, energy cycle. Okay? Yang saya rasa you betul-betul kena faham cycle is lepas ni, 5.6. Bond Haber cycle. Ah Ini ya, ini memang you kena uh, Bond Haber cycle. Ah Ini memang you kena really master the cycle. Construct the cycle. Okay? Boleh eh? Saya tak berani nak cakap uh, takkan ditanya macam tu kan. Tapi kot lah. Sebab saya bukan saya yang buat soalan kan. Uh, you find, you punya final ke apa. Kot lah dia tanya. At least you tahulah the method eh. Okay. 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 So cuba jawab ni. Soalan uh, checkpoint 15. Calculate the standard entropy formation of acetylene. Uh, lepas tu dia bagi. This one. You rasa Should we use uh, direct or indirect method? Ah, cuba lah, cuba jawab dulu. I give you two minutes. Macam saya cakap, first lagi nak buat dia apa? Find the target equation. Contoh tadi, ada target dia. But here, kalau you perasan, tak ada target equation. Tapi target equation dia tersembunyi dekat dalam soalan. Calculate the standard entropy of formation of acetylene. So this is your target. Target equation. You can uh, tulis dulu equation tu. Barulah you boleh dapat according to the apa uh, series of reaction tu. Itu dah buat ya. Eh.
Okay. So, the discuss eh. So, if you get a question like this, first of all, you need to write the target equation. Okay, so dia, sebab dia nak send it on tepi formation of this one. So, you need to have the equation before uh, you know that uh, you nak susun-susun equation yang dia bagi kat sini kan. So, okay, first thing first is, okay, entropy formation of C2H2. Kalau tak tahulah C2H2 ni gas ke solid ke, you tengok balik kat sini. Mesti ada satu C2H2. Okay, they mention this is gas. Okay, acetylene memang gas lah. Okay, based on the entropy formation, to form C2H2 is basically form from the carbon, solid graphite, okay, and also, the mesti standard element kan, and also hydrogen gas. Okay. And this, nak balance kan, this carbon is 2 lah. 2C plus H2 produce C2H2. Okay. So, clear. So, what is the entropy of fraction here? Okay. Kita tak tahulah. So, kita nak cari. So, based on the uh, equation given. Okay. Here. So, benda pertama bila dapat, you tengok. Okay. Now, dia ada carbon. Where is the carbon? So, here. The first equation. But here, carbon is 2 carbon. Here is only 1. So, you dapat je ni. You tak payah tengok dah yang lain. You tengok je ni. You, sebab you tak boleh ubah this uh, target equation. You cannot change because this is entropy formation. So, yeah, you boleh ubah is this one. So, this one you have to multiply with 2. So, of course, this entropy reaction also will multiply with 2. Okay, so dah darat 2. Now, hydrogen. Hydrogen, uh, yang penting make sure dia ada satu je. Kalau dia ada dua, you have uh, untuk you kena buat tu last kali eh. So, hydrogen cuma ada pada equation number two. Okay, for this uh, hydrogen is on the left side, also on the left side, red turn and dia one mole, one mole. Okay, tak ada issue. Now here equation two, you can remain. Okay, and then product C2H2. You have C2H2 from equation 3 and this C2H2 is on the left side. You not on the right side. So you have to reverse and don't forget you have two mole here and this one is only one mole. So two mole, one mole. So you gonna, you need one, you need two. So you have two and, and you have to divide by two. Supaya you boleh dapat satu. Okay, this is your target. Remember, bukan darat dua eh. This is your target. Satu, kat sini dua. So, divide by two. Okay. So, bila dapat macam tu, okay. So, tadi kan kita kata carbon ni tadi uh, kena darab dua kan. So, that's why the entropy reaction also multiply with two. And yang number two kita tak ubah apa-apa. Kita remain. Okay. So, that's why for uh, only for CO, uh, here, the third equation, you reverse the equation. C2H2 jadi belah kanan and then you bahagi dua tadi kan. So, reverse you akan dapat positive value and you bahagi dua darab dengan setengah lah. Okay, you get the answer. Okay, bila dapat ni, biasanya okay, kita bagi satu ruang ni, you tulis lagi sekali. So, sebab kalau you tulis kat sini takut you tersalah cancel ke apa. Okay, you tulis lagi sekali because you need to include all the equation. Equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. Okay. So tadi yang carbon jadi 2, you have this value. And then hydrogen yang remain tadi, you just uh, salin balik. And then you have CO2, acetylene yang duduk sebelah kanan tadi. Okay. So you just cancel uh, all the substances yang boleh cancel. Yang boleh cancel tu, um, they must be between reactants and products. Kalau reactants dengan reactants, dia jadi apa? Dia akan jadi sum up. Dia akan jadi tambah lah. Okay. So here carbon graphite of course dia tak akan dibuang lah. Dia ada dalam you punya target equation. And then oxygen. We have oxygen here. We also have oxygen here. And we have oxygen here. Okay. Ada dua ni kat sini dia jadi tambah kan sebab dia side yang sama. Tu oxygen plus half O2 total dia kat sini je dah jadi 5 over 2. Kan? 5 over 2 oksigen dengan 5 over 2 here, you boleh cancel. Sebab so, je ni boleh cancel lah ni. Okay. CO2, cancel dengan yang ini. We have hydrogen. Hydrogen tak ada apa. That's why dia turun bawah. Okay. And then water. Water can cancel with this one. Left and right eh. So C2H2 tak ada yang boleh cancel. You salin je balik. 
Okay so at the end you akan dapat uh, yang tinggal tu semua adalah bersamaan dengan the target equation. Okay so this is your target equation lah. Okay how about delta H? So delta H tak ada masalah you just total up negative value plus this negative value plus this positive value. Okay so you dapatlah jawapan. So yang paling penting make sure uh, value negatif positif ni kan sangat bahaya kan you ubah sikit je value tu akan dapat lain kan yang penting this equation uh, apa substance yang tinggal tu akhirnya you buat turun akan sama dengan your target equation ni okay. this is your target equation kan dia mesti sama kalau tiba-tiba ada eh ada oksigen ada lebih oksigen ah maksudnya you ada salah kira kat mana-mana lah ah okey kat situ boleh check lah sebenarnya eh Ya, yes. yes. Ya, elemen tu dia punya mol tak mempengaruhi entropi entropi energi. Uh, tak faham eh? Ya, saya tak faham soalan tu. Maksudnya mol coefficient ke? Elemen elemen. Mhm. Uh -huh. dia punya entropi adalah zero. Mhm. Uh -huh. So kalau dia punya mol kepada mol elemen tu tak mempengaruhi dia punya entropi tu. So uh, they remain as zero lah. Okay. Uh, uh, saya rasa saya faham soalan tu. Uh, zero tu cuma untuk entropy formation tau. Value ni zero untuk entropy form, uh, value kalau you kata dia zero tu untuk formation saja. You mean I mean formation of the oxygen. Okay. So dia tak sama dengan you buat untuk uh, direct method tadi. Direct method because of you memang specifically mana tadi eh direct method Direct method you memang specific pakai uh, entropy of formation. Okay. Kalau kat sini eh mana eh. Okay. This specific formation. So that's why kalau kat sini uh, kalau you punya tu oxygen you akan lima darab kosong. Sebab you kira satu-satu. You kira yang ini, you kira yang ini, you kira yang ini, you kira yang ini. Formation for every each of the uh, substance tu. Kalau indirect method, okay, tadi tadi yang awak tanya pasal kosong tu lah kan, itu untuk direct method, specific. Sebab tu dia, dia mention specific formation. Kalau indirect method dia tak semestinya formation. Contoh kalau you refer balik tadi soalan, checkpoint ni, okay. You boleh check this one eh. CO2, is this entropy formation? The answer is yes because CO2 one mole dia produce daripada carbon graphite and also O2 both element. So ini kita boleh kata entropy formation of what? Of CO2 eh not of oxygen of CO2. Okay so uh, okay how about this one? Water. Again yes because this oxygen uh, also standard element hydrogen also standard element. So this entropy relation also I can say that it is entropy formation. How about sec, uh, the third one? This is clearly not entropy formation sebab you ada dua produk kat sini. Produk dia adalah dua produk lepas tu mole dia bukan satu kan. Kalau saya kata is this combustion entropy standard entropy combustion sebab you bakar dengan oksigen you dapat CO2 dengan water. The answer is no. Why? Because acetylene dia dua mole. This is not one mole. Ah, uh, that's why you have to refer back to your equation, uh, your uh, apa definition. Uh, where kalau combustion dia mesti one mole. So bila yang ini nak kata combustion pembukaan, so ini adalah entropy reaction yang biasa. Once walaupun yang ada dua ni adalah formation, yang satu lagi tu bukan formation, you dah tak boleh assume that uh, oh oksigen ni value dia kosong. No, you cannot assume that. Okay? I hope I um I, I'm answering your question. Yes, Miss. Ah, okay. I understand. Thank you, Miss. Ah, sama. Okay. So you jangan uh, tercampur lah eh, direct method dengan indirect method. So this this is indirect method. So you just cancel je mana yang boleh cancel lah. You guna cara matematik. Macam you, uh, ini saya cakap saya suka guna cara method ni because dia macam uh, puzzle. You cancel, cancel, cancel. Akhirnya you dapat jawapan apa yang tinggal. Dan jawapan awak tu adalah sama pula, eh, sorry ni tak. Jawapan awak tu adalah sama dengan apa yang you nak target uh, equation you eh. Okay so ni satu lagi method tadi lah energy cycle method. Okay for this um, 
Saya tukar warna lah eh. For this equation, selalu kita akan target target method target method pula. Target equation kita, we know that um, sekejap ni target ke? Saya lupa dah equation dia. Dua carbon H2. So this is your target. Okay. Okay basically uh, equation apa yang ada dalam tu? Carbon plus, uh, sorry ada dah kat sini. Carbon plus oxygen. This one equation number one. Is here kan? Carbon plus oxygen dapat tu CO2. So kenapa tu? Sebab kat sini dua. So that's why you punya data H, you darab dua here. And then hydrogen plus half O2 dapat water. So itu untuk equation number two. So the value is remain lah. Okay. Ada you tengok kat sini, you have two CO2. Two CO2 plus H2O produce C2H2. Kalau ikut dalam ni equation number three, dia terbalik kan? Okay, so kalau terbalik, seber, kalau ikutkan sebenarnya arrow asal dia is like this. Ni ke sini kan? Kalau ikut asal. Tapi because of uh, you terbalikkan sebab kita nak ini, uh, kita nak ni jadi macam ni kan? So that's why you tengok perasan kat sini the value will change from negative become positive. Dalam masa yang sama, dalam equation asal dua, dua mol. So this is one mol. So that's why they divide by two. Okay. Dan end up last dia macam mana? Yang ini yang dia darab dua ni, you tambah dengan yang ini. You tambahlah juga dengan yang ini yang dah, eh, dah yang dah jadi positif dan bahagi dua. So you akan dapat similar answer. Okay, basically method ni, energy cycle method is a bond haber cycle yang saya akan ajar uh, 5.6. Okay, cuma kalau bond haber cycle tu dia lebih pada saya lah, dia lebih tersusun sebab tu dia boleh faham flow dia. Kalau yang ni, it depends on the equation given here. Apa yang dia bagilah you have to follow. Okay, nanti bila you pergi bond haber cycle mungkin you akan lebih faham this energy cycle method lah. Okay, cuba jawab pula untuk yang ni. Check pun 16. Lebih kurang sama macam yang tadi. Cuba jawab eh. Okay, kalau soalan macam ni The thermal chemical equation for standard entropy combustion of methane and standard entropy formation of carbon dioxide are given Calculate the standard entropy formation of methane So dia nak delta HF of methane Yang dia bagi sekarang methane ni adalah dalam bentuk combustion And the rest dia bagi dalam bentuk formation uh, Again, ni nampak tak kat sini? Maksudnya dia tak bagi dalam bentuk formation semua walaupun Uh, ada dua formation tapi satu tu tak ada formation so you tak boleh guna direct method eh. Okay. So dia nak entropy formation. 
So entropy formation is CH4. So methane sama juga kalau you tak ingat lah dia ni gas ke apa. You refer kat sini. Dia ada mention kan. So this is gas. Okay. Dan dia daripada carbon. Basically kalau ikut sebenarnya you have to put as graphite lah eh. Sebab ini pun dia letak solid je kan. So letak betul-betul. So carbon solid comma graphite. Okay. Plus hydrogen. Gas. So hydrogen darat dua. So what is the, what is the value here? Okay. Bila nampak kat sini. Okay as you can see. So we have carbon here. C duduk sebelah kiri juga. Okay saya kena. Saya kena tulis balik je eh. C as graphite plus 2 H2 gas produce C H4 gas. Okay. C on the left side. So C on the left side one mole. So you can remain the equation. Hydrogen. Hydrogen cuma ada dekat sini. So you have on the left side. Okay. So dia darab dua je. So you darab dua kat sini. So of course kat sini pun kena darab dua. How about CH4? CH4 is equation number one. So dia belah kiri and then one mole. So you have to reverse the equation. Okay. First reverse, second remain, uh, the third one you multiply with two. Okay. So ni tadi equation ni kan. So first tadi kita reverse. So CH4 is on the right side. So the value will become positive. C tadi remain right. C remain C pula. Number two remain. Okay. Carbon to remain. Okay. Number two, eh sorry. Number three equation three hydrogen multiply with two right. So you have darab dua kat sini. Okay. Then again cancel on which one you can cancel. So CO2 you cancel with CO2 here. Hydrogen 2H2O with 2 hydrogen here. Ah, Okay oxygen nampak kat sini kan ada dua on the left side. Equation 2 and equation 3. So you total up you can dapat 1. Eh sorry 1 plus 1. 2 kan. So 2 you can cancel with 2 here. So end up memang tak ada baki pun lah. Kalau ada baki, you, let, you letaklah. Baki tu kat mana? Kalau baki dia sebelah kanan, you letak belah kanan. Baki dia sebelah kiri, you letak sebelah kiri eh. Okay, so this is your target lah. Target equation. So you just total up lah. So positive 891 plus negative this one. Yang ini yang after you dah darab dua. So you dapatlah value for entropy formation of CH4. Okay. Using energy cycle method. Sama jugalah. Basically, this is your target equation. Your main equation. Awak sebenarnya apa? This one lah kan. So, equation yang ada dalam soalan, you have carbon uh, produce CO2. Okay, so basically ada, sorry. Ada oksigen lah kat sini sebenarnya. Tertinggal lah ni. Okay, so the value yang ni remain kan, negative 393 and then hydrogen kepada water ni Hydrogen kepada water tambah half O2 kan. So tadi uh, uh, equation yang baru you have to multiply with 2. So that's why 2 hydrogen multiply with 2 ada oksigen dia tak jadi half lah. So you dapat this one. Okay. And another one is CH4 plus O2 O2 produce CH4 plus 2 O2 here. Ha, oksigen semua hilang kat sini. Plus 2 O2 produce 2 H2O plus CO2. Okay. Ini yang you tak reverse. Okay. Basically kita nak CH4 as the as the product. So bila nak CH4 as product. So arrow should be reverse. Arrow kena daripada sini patah balik naik atas. So bila reverse this negative value will become positive 891. Kita reverse je kan? Tak ada darat dua. Uh, okay. Kita reverse je eh. Okay. Positive 91. So kat sini sebenarnya bukan tolak lah. This is positive. Okay. Tertinggal tadi eh. Oksigen-oksigen tu semua tertinggal. Okay. So far clear. Uh, any question for uh, apa ni namanya? Hassel's law. Direct uh, direct in, indirect method. Hassel's law. Okay eh. Sekarang berapa? 3, 5, 7. Okay. So uh, I assume clear sebab tak ada yang uh, unmute. Uh, jangan tanya dekat chat box eh sebab saya tak nampak. Okay so um, now we move to 5.6. Okay this is the second last. 
Okay, second lah. Basically yang last lah sebenarnya. The last one is the only application. Okay, lattice energy and bond have a cycle. Ha, ni yang saya cakap. Cycle yang you kena betul-betul faham is this one. Tapi basically kalau you dah faham bond have a cycle, sebenarnya kalau ikutkan energy cycle method ni pun senang je. Okay. Okay, so you dah biasa dengar kan perkataan lattice energy. So lattice energy bila you dengar? Masa chapter 3. Ha, kita akan pakai balik just that delta H tu lah kita nak value tu. Tapi that value of course will come with the uh, equation. Equation of the yang you dapatkan this um, lattice energy ni lah. So at the end of this uh, subtopic okay you should be able to define standard lattice energy. Standard lah. So apa maksud standard kat situ? For simple ionic crystal. Okay and then construct Okay, you kena belajar cara nak construct bond have a cycle. Basically macam tadilah. In general macam ni, you have to construct. Maksudnya arrow ke bawah ke, ke tepi ke, ke mana tu. Okay. And then uh, also for the simple ionic solid, kita tak bagi yang complex lah. And then calculate. Of course ada calculation juga. Uh, the lattice energy using Hess's law method. So that's why basically bond have a cycle ni dengan energy cycle method tadi dia lebih kurang sebab kita masih menggunakan konsep as a law. Okay, lattice energy. To recap balik sikit. What is lattice energy? It's a heat release, okay, when the solid crystals forms from the separate ions in the gaseous state under standard condition. Heat release, okay, exothermic reaction when the solid crystal is formed. Contoh solid crystal, sodium chloride. Solid eh? is formed from what? From separate ions in the gaseous state. Ion eh? So Na plus plus Cl minus in terms of gas. Okay? So this is delta H lattice energy. Apa beza dengan formation? Formation NaCl juga, solid juga but dia form daripada Na solid plus half Cl2 gas. Nampak tak beza? This one is delta HF formation. This one kalau dia dalam bentuk ion dan dia mesti gas lah. Dia adalah entropy uh, for lattice energy. Okay. So basically lattice energy cannot be measured directly. Dia siapa cakap ke sebelum ni? Um, dia macam macam yang saya pernah cakap yang uh, tak semua reaction yang you 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 have to uh, I mean you can measure by using okay you buat je eksperimen calorimetry uh, using calorimeter you dapat uh, value of data H uh, tak semua kan uh, same goes this one lah basically lattice energy you cannot measure directly so you nak measure that lattice energy basically you have to combine a series of steps daripada yang lain-lain punya reaction, you combine, you akan dapat, uh, da baru kat situ, barulah dapat lattice energy. So that combination series of steps, uh, ni yang kita panggil bond Haber cycle. Okay. So what is standard? Uh, tadi kan you have to know the definition of the standard. So of course standard ni, tadi kita dah tahu lattice energy ni tadi when one mole of ionic crystal is formed, right? Okay, maybe tadi in general kita tak ada mention pun about one mole. But for standard, dia mesti one mole. Kan? Sama macam you buat definition for uh, formation, combustion, uh, neutralization, dia mesti one mole. Now, one mole apa? Ionic crystal yang form. Okay, dia macam formation, right? But dia form from gases ion. Ion tapi dalam bentuk gas. Okay? You have to remember, dia mesti gas. Sebab saya tahu nanti ramai yang sudah macam, ah, uh, ion. Nanti sekejap lagi dia buat aqueous pula. Ah, salah eh. Dia mesti gas. Okay. And of course standard mesti saya sini pun tertinggal. Must be in standard conditions. Ayat ni tak boleh lari lah. Okay. Include this one. Okay. Ha, ni tadi lah contoh saya dah tunjuk tadi kan. Na plus gas plus Cl minus gas produce NaCl solid. So the value delta H lattice energy ha, ni lah value dia. Dia sama macam you buat equation untuk formation ke dia mesti thermal chemical equation tu mesti sebaris lah. You have equation on the left side and then you have the lattice uh, value of uh, lattice energy lah or value of delta H. Okay. 
So apa di bond have a cycle ni tadi kan? So it's a hypothetical series of fraction. Kan tadi a series of fraction kita combine together. Okay, uh, it represents the formation of an ionic compound from its constituent element. Macam kita tahu Na Cl. So daripada Na daripada Cl ni combination the the uh, series of fraction last kali you akan dapat this NaCl combined together as ionic compound. Okay. So the reactions are chosen so that the change in enthalpy of each reaction is known except for the last one which is lattice energy. So lattice energy ni lah yang kita basically through experiment kita tak boleh buat but the rest kita boleh tahu. So daripada situ you total up kan you akan dapat value of lattice energy. Okay. However dalam question dia takkanlah tiba asyik tanya lattice energy je. Dia boleh tanya benda lain. Okay tapi lattice energy tu dia perlu bagilah. Tapi kalau in reality you tak boleh dapat um, lattice energy tu by its own. Dia mesti macam ada series of fraction. You ada for adalah calculation dekat situ you akan akhirnya you boleh dapat lattice energy. Okay. So bila kita kata dia akan relate dengan a series of fractions Apa reaction yang ada dalam tu ataupun apa kan apa equation yang ada dalam tu eh It's actually related to ionization energy which is IE Okay, electron affinity EA This is IE. Ingat lagi? Aduh masaklah nak kena ingat balik chapter 2 IE EA ha, Ingat this part eh IE EA and then other Uh, atomic and molecular properties eh. And of course uh, nak uh, add up all the series of fraction tu kita guna Hessel's law. Okay. Where here the main equation or we can say can we say this is the target. Okay saya lebih suka guna perkataan main lah. The main equation here is the enthalpy of formation. Okay is equals to all the series of fraction including the lattice energy. Ataupun, okay sekejap saya teringat ada satu cycle. Okay this, ha, you tengok cycle ni. Let's say lah, this is the cycle eh. Nak relatekan dengan bond have a cycle tadi. A kepada B, kita assume delta H1, this is the main equation. Where this is enthalpy of formation. Main eh. Tapi uh, okay. You boleh gerak let's say ikut highway kan Pada A kepada B. You gerak straight je Dia dapat dah value of delta H Tapi you boleh guna ikut jalan lain Series of steps A you dapat C dulu Okay dapat product dulu And then product ni digunakan balik sebagai return Dapat pula B Tapi hasil tambah this one Daripada A Dan dia naik kepada B And that dapat B The value ni akan also equal to this one Okay, value apa? Value of delta H2 plus delta H3 is equal to delta H1 Where delta H1 is the main equation tadi Enthalpy of formation Okay, ha, sebab tu saya cakap energy cycle method ni related to bond have a cycle Okay, sebab tu okay, saya pergi balik <coughs> Mana tadi? Ha, this one eh Ni you kena faham konsep dia Enthalpy formation is equal to the sum of enthalpies, all the enthalpies yang ada dekat dalam tu. Dalam bond have cycle. Okay, including the lattice energy. <coughs> Lepas tu kita saya cakap tadi, uh, direction are chosen, maksudnya delta H1, delta H2, 3 semua dah diberi termasuk enthalpy of formation. So daripada sini you boleh dapat lattice energy. Okay, so apa reaction yang ada tu, tadi kan saya dimension, okay. Selain daripada apa tadi, lattice energy eh. So we have enthalpy of formation, delta HF. We have enthalpy, standard enthalpy of atomization untuk dia menjadi atom. Standard enthalpy of ionization, so this is IE. Standard bond dissociation enthalpy, okay. And then we have electron affinity, EA eh. Okay, ni yang paling common lah selalu ada eh dekat dalam bond have a cycle. Okay, if you look at this, kita pergi satu-satu eh. We have standard enthalpy of formation. Okay. I hope you still remember lah eh. You have to refer subtopic 5.3. Enthalpy formation is when, okay, one wall of substance is formed. Okay, from its standard element in standard condition. So, lithium solid element dia kan. 
and then fluorine dalam bentuk gas molecule. This is the element. So you you balance, make sure lithium fluoride is one mole. So this is standard enthalpy formation kan? Okay. And then what is the atomization? So atomization is the heat absorbed. Okay, this is uh, endothermic reaction. When one mole, atomization kan, kita maksudnya nak jadi atom. When one mole of free gases atom is formed. Okay, from its element under standard condition. Atomization converts solid state or liquid state substances to gaseous state. Okay, for example, untuk ayat yang tu tadi adalah contoh. Sodium awak dah memang dalam bentuk atom. Satu je kan, sodium solid. Tapi by definition, entropy atomization, you have to form gases. Gases atom. So solid, you convert jadi gas, itu adalah entropy atomization. Okay, clear eh? Maksudnya anything lah, solid ke, liquid ke, you uh, tukar jadi gas, dia dah memang atom. Apa you tukar pula jadi gas, atom juga, ah, itu baru entropy of atomization. Satu lagi, you can convert, dia dah gas. Dia memang dah gas, tapi dia molecule. For example, hydrogen. H2, you convert jadi H gas. Ah, ni memang betul-betul convert jadi atom, right? Okay, so that's why ini pun we call it as atomization. <coughs> okay, boleh lah, eh? clear eh? Okay, so apa uh, ni yang tadi atomization. And then we also have standard bond dissociation, entropy or bond energy. Bila kita panggil bond dissociation, maksudnya kita ada bond, kita putuskan. Ha, itu maksud bond dissociation eh. So standard bond dissociation entropy or we call it as bond energy is the energy that must be absorbed. Again, this is uh, endothermic reaction to separate two atoms in a covalent bond. You nak separate two atoms. Okay, basically contoh A kepada A, you putuskan, you dapatlah 2A. Right? This one kan? So contoh paling senang, number one ni. Hydrogen produce 2H you get bond energy for 3 to positive value. Okay, kalau you tengok kat sini, apa beza this one dengan the previous one? Hydrogen juga. This one, yang ini. Half hydrogen produce H with this one. Hydrogen produce 2H. Ada beza kan? This one, you produce 2 hydrogen. Bond energy positive for 3, 2. This one, you only produce one hydrogen. And the value also different, 2, 1, 6. Okay, so that's why. Uh, again, saya cakap eh, definition is very important. That definition tu yang akan membuatkan awak faham kenapa hydrogen 1 value dia tak sama dengan hydrogen 2. Basically, this hydrogen 1 is for atomization. You nak jadi atom. That's why dia 1. Kalau yang ni, dia tak dia tak cakap perlu jadi atom. Dia cuma cakap dia separate. Dia pecah. Hydrogen tu, bond tu dia putuskan dapatlah dua hydrogen tu tak? So that's why here the bond energy, dia tak letak atomization kan? Dia letak this one as bond energy. This value is twice more than the atomization process. So that's why dia kata kat sini, for diatomic gas like hydrogen, entropy of atomization is equal to half of the bond energy. Part 3, 2, you bahagi 2, you dapatlah value atomization which is 216. Okay, clear eh? So hopefully you tak confused lah bila you dapat, uh, uh, bila you jumpa uh, equation macam ni eh. Okay, and boleh baca notes kat bawah ni. Okay, the standard entropy change of atomization for noble gases is zero because they, uh, they exist as monoatomic gases. Okay, sebab dia dah memang monoatomic kan, so then they're very stable, so that's why dia memang zero je lah value dia eh. Okay, this is IE. I hope you still remember the definition of IE. Minimum energy required tu apa? Remove electron. Itu in general, right? So here... Of, again, energy here is actually focusing on heat lah. Betul tak? Okay. Heat required when one mole of gases atom 
removes one mole of its electron to form one mole of positively charged gases ion under standard condition. Okay. Kita nak uh, uh, perlukan energy, uh, heat required kan? Perlukan energy daripada uh, daripada luar lah. Okay, one mole. Uh, satu mole atom, you nak remove pun one mole of electron. Satu-satu. IE ni you kena buat satu-satu kan? You remove satu dulu, dah habis tu baru you remove lagi kedua. Tapi you remove one by one. Even though magnesium, you nak remove dua elektron, you remove one by one kan? Okay, so that's why they one mole, one mole, one mole. And then we also, okay, you have learned uh, previously that you have the first IE, second IE, third IE. Because of what? Because of apa yang saya cakap tadi lah. You have to remove one by one. Okay. Uh, uh, daripada atom jadi gas yang pertama, first IE. So dia dah jadi ion, you remove lagi. Second IE and seterusnya lah. Okay. <coughs> so the standard entropy of ionization you must start with magnesium and make sure dia dalam bentuk gas. Ha, okay. Ha, dia relate lah dengan apa yang belajar IE sebelum ni. Memang dalam bentuk gas kan. So that's why kat sini kalau you tengok by definition pun dia kata kat sini gases. Gases item eh. Okay. So you dapat Mg plus gas. Mg plus lepas tu kalau let's say Mg kita tahu dia nak jadi Mg2 plus. So you jadi kat sini lah. So this is IE yang second, IE yang first. Of course takkan sama value dia eh. Okay, we also have the EA Okay, EA dia terbalik lah kan daripada IE Dia akan accept, uh, apa, akan accept one mole of electron So untuk dapatkan negatively charge eh So this uh, oxygen will uh, receive electron to get O minus So this is the value of EA Okay, kalau awak ingat lagi lah EA ni dia ada dua Dia boleh um, exo dia boleh juga endo. Okay, so for the first step, dia akan release heat supaya dia boleh terima. But for the second step, I mean the second EA, okay, dia, they need to uh, apa absorb heat. Dia jadi positif sebab apa? Because dia dah terima elektron, so kat situ dah, dah lah elektron negatif kan? Dah ada repulsion. Dah ada repulsion, dia need to overcome Uh, that repulsion tu untuk dia terima lagi elektron. Okay. So that's why apa for the second EA basically normally dia adalah positive value eh. Okay. <coughs> Now kita tengok contoh. So eh. Okay. Ni contoh um kalau dia nak minta untuk calculate lattice energy. So dia akan bagi macam ni. Calculate the lattice energy of lithium fluoride. So dia bagi all the equations. Okay. Selalu soalan dia takkanlah bagi macam ni. Tapi ni sebab kita nak explain dulu one by one. Okay. First I think before dia bagi uh, the equation pun. Kalau you tak ada equation so kita tahu. Lattice energy lithium fluoride ni apa equation dia? So you tulis dulu. You have lithium fluoride solid. Lattice eh, bukan formation. So, bila lattice kita tahu dia mesti lithium plus gas plus fluorine minus gas. Balance eh. Okay. So, this value adalah delta H lattice energy. Ah Ini yang you nak cari. Okay. So, normally ini yang you nak cari. The rest tu dia akan bagi. First, dia akan bagi entropy formation. So, you nampak eh. This is formation. From standard element, this is the value. And then dia akan bagi entropy of atomization. So betul tak? Lithium solid to lithium gas. From solid to gas, we call it as atomization kan? Okay. Step number three, okay ada pembetulan sikit. Um, tak tahu lah dalam slide saya ada pembetulan lah. Hopefully you all pun sama. Dia tulis bond dissociation entropy. So you, you, you abaikan ni. This is entropy of atomization juga. Because dia dissociate half F2 kepada F. Uh, uh, one atom. Kalau dia dissociate F2 kepada F, 2F, uh, ini baru bond dissociation. Okay, so bukan yang ni lah. So on, you have, bila you choose this one, dia adalah entropy of atomization. Okay, so of course yang ni pun you padam. 
Delta H is not bond energy. It is atomization. Ya yeah, eh. The value tak sesuai sama lah 75.3. Tapi kalau tiba-tiba lah eh, dia bagi atomization dia tanya what is the standard uh, bond dissociation? Nah, darab je lah dua. Okay. So bila dia darab dua dapatlah bond dissociation. Macam dia kata dia kan kalau you guna F2 you dapatlah Uh, sebenarnya 150.6 bond association dia Okay Now Dia bagi pula standard etapi of ionization Betul lah kan ionization little gas Produce litem plus Gas okay Jadi ion, cat ion so this is IE And then electron affinity you have to You accept electron So F daripada atom ni You tambah receive electron you get F minus So this is EA And then set number 6, ini yang you nak cari, right? Ah, ni yang tadi saya dah tulis lah. Lithium plus plus F minus produce lithium fluoride. Okay, so macam mana nak combine? Basically sebelum saya nak buat ni, saya saya lebih prefer you terus draw dululah nak bagi nampak eh. Okay, kita lompat satu eh. So, you construct the bond habit cycle dulu. So, benda pertama, step first step yang you kena buat is this one. What is this? Entropy apa? Formation. Okay. This is the main equation. I need first step you can buat. Tulis dulu entropy formation. Okay. So daripada situ you boleh turun, turun, turun. Dia macam energy cycle tadi. From lithium solid, you tak boleh terus lompat jadi lithium plus. Kan? Dia punya uh, sequence dia one by one. So lithium solid you tukar dulu jadi lithium gas. Kan? What is this? This is entropy of atomization. Right? Solid pada gas kan? And then how about this one? F2. F2 ni dah memang setengah. Okay? So for a main equation which is delta HF you cannot change the coefficient because Uh, this is entropy formation right standard Kalau you change it setengah Mungkin tu setengah susah lah nak kira You nak tukar dia jadi satu ke dua ke Tapi bila you tukar Automatically value kat sini pun uh, Sorry uh, coefficient ni pun akan berubah So bila dia berubah dia, dia tak jadi one mole Okay so you jangan ubah uh, Formation eh Yang lain nak ubah tak apa Okay so now half F2 Produce F So again sama juga F2 kepada F kan so this is entropy of Atomization but this one is entropy atomization for fluorine Daripada molecule pada atom Okay now lithium ni tadi you dah jadi gas Kita dalam lattice kita nak positive charge So from lithium to become lithium plus this is IE Betul tak? Remove one electron IE so delta H ni is IE And then fluorine You want to become F minus So F kepada F minus is EA. Okay. So okay you dah ada sampai data H4. Now lithium plus add dengan F minus. You tambah lah kat sini eh. Tambah F minus. You put arrow. You dapat balik you punya lithium fluoride. So what is the data H here? So this is lattice energy. Okay. Ha, Ni lah nama dia cycle. Bond have a cycle. Okay. So maknanya kita tahu kalau yang lurus ke sini is delta H F. This is the main kan. So this value of delta H F is equals to value yang you tambah 1, mana tu? 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay. It's equals to delta H. 1 tambah 2 tambah 3 tambah 4 tambah 5. Okay. Ha, inilah yang bawah ni eh. This one. Allah hai. Maaf ingat bengit dah. This one eh. Ha. So yang kita nak cari. This one. So boleh tak cari? Boleh lah kan. Masuk kerja value. Dapat lah. So that's why benda ni basically adalah sama dengan ni. So, saya, saya tahu saya tak boleh. Saya kena draw dulu baru saya boleh kira macam ni. So kalau you buat. Okay. Ini you nampak dari segi bond habit cycle kan. This one basically kalau you nak guna. Uh, Hassel's law secara terus. I mean 
you you tak guna bond hybrid cycle kan? Okay, kalau dia suruh dia construct bond hybrid cycle, you need to construct this one lah. Kalau you guna Hess's law secara terus, you list list down all the equation. Tapi equation yang you list down ni, this one is from 1 until 5. Okay, and this one is delta HF. Make sure total 1 until 5 is equal to delta HF. HF. And you kena tahu lah. Okay. So you let's say lah you list down semua. You cancel mana you boleh cancel. Okay. So that's why kat sini lithium gas dia cancel dengan lithium gas. Fluorine gas dia cancel dengan fluorine gas. Of course elektron pun akan cancel dengan elektron. Okay. Lithium plus dia cancel dengan lithium plus ya F minus dia cancel dengan F minus. So yang tinggal is this one. Okay and also F, uh, F tu pun kan kita tak ada cancel apa-apa and lithium fluoride. So sama dengan you dapat delta HF kan. So daripada sini all this uh, the value here you can just tolakkan dengan total of this value you akan dapatlah value of delta uh, H5 tu eh that is. Okay. Uh, ni has law lah has a law. Sebab kalau ikutkan you punya delta HF, your target is this one right sebenarnya. Your target is this one. Okay. Uh, lithium plus. Ini yang you nak. Tapi in this case you kena faham yang you ada main equation which is delta HF. So this main equation mesti tolak dengan yang lain. Okay. So nak tengok you faham ke tak. Oh okay tak apa. Kita ada lagi satu contoh. Saya ingat ada terus checkpoint. Oh maybe checkpoint dulu lah. Penat pula saya. Ah cuba buat dulu checkpoint ni. Nanti baru kita pergi contoh yang uh, MGCL tu tu. Okay. Apa yang saya nak? Construct. Construct. Maksudnya you kena buat eh. Bond hyper cycle. And calculate of course lah. Sabar. Lattice. Lattice energy. Cuba buat. Cuma lain sikit kat sini, dia tak bagi equation, dia bagi dalam bentuk ayat. Entropy of what, entropy of what. Ah, uh, Cuba buat eh. I give you two minutes.
okay <coughs> so kalau dapat soalan macam ni okay first thing first again uh, kita cari dulu apa main dia Okay, so dia nak lattice energy kan So uh, of what? Of potassium chloride So you dapat je soalan ni Kita tahu main equation is enthalpy formation KCL solid formation dia mesti daripada K dalam bentuk solid Okay and then uh, dia react dengan chlorine eh? So Cl2 gas So this is the main Okay and yang dia nak is enthalpy Uh, for lattice. So lattice we know that it, it's supposed to be like this. Okay gas plus Cl minus gas produce KCl solid. So daripada uh, main ni K solid you have to write until you dapat K plus gas and from this half Cl2 you must uh, get Cl minus gas. Barulah you dapat jawapan ni sama. Okay so You tengok pula data yang dia bagi. Entropy of atomization of potassium. Maksudnya apa? Potassium menjadi atom. So kita tahu ini equation dia. You boleh write terus the equation lah. So we know that this is actually from solid to gas. Okay. And then entropy of atomization of chlorine. How about this one? Daripada sini kan? So you have, sebab dia nak atomization eh, dia bukan bond dissociation. So you have half Cl2 gas kepada Cl gas. Okay, yang penting dia mesti balance, left and right. Okay, and then electron affinity of chlorine. Here dia akan, this chlorine gas dia akan receive electron. So dia akan jadi Cl minus again dia masih dalam gas. First IE of potassium. So you have K gas and then dia akan jadi K plus gas plus electron. That's the equation right? And then entropy formation of potassium chloride is this one lah. Right? Okay. So bila dia suruh you construct the bond harbor cycle. Okay. Apa yang you perlu buat adalah Okay, saya biarkan page kosong ni untuk saya tunjuk lah. Okay, you tengok eh, one by one, step by step. Sebab kebanyakan jawapan semua dah segedebuk aja kan. So, kita buat sama-sama kat sini. Apa jadah tadi? Saya lupa. KCL. Okay. You have KCL here, solid tadi. You buat main dulu. Main dia tadi, from K solid plus half Cl to gas. Balance kan? Okay. So this is entropy formation. Okay, maybe we should uh, put the number. This is one, two, three, four and five. So this is number five. Okay, number five. Okay, so daripada sini ikut turutan. From solid, you mesti tukar jadi gas dulu. So that's why you akan tukar dia menjadi gas. Okay, and then chlorine. Sama juga you akan tukar dia jadi gas tapi atom. So both are entropy atomization kan. Cuba K kepada K gas. Ini number one. This is number one. Kita H1. Eh sorry. Lepas tu chlorine. This is number two. Delta H2. Okay. Uh, maybe saya... Tukar sikit yang ni. This is delta H5. Okay. Okay. Ni 5 ya. Eh? Okay. After dia dapat gas, duduk gas, duduk atom. Then you tukar jadi positive charge. Okay. Ion eh. So ni dalam bentuk gas. And here also dalam bentuk ion tapi n ion. So gas. So K kepada K plus yang mana? Number four, right? Okay, so this is delta H4. Cl kepada Cl minus, this one, right? Electron affinity. So this one is delta H3. Okay, where is the lattice? This one. When K plus add, you tak letak tambah kat sini, tengah-tengah ni. So maksudnya K plus tambah Cl minus will produce KCl. 
Okay. So what is the delta H here? Tak ada dalam senarai kan? Ini yang you nak cari. So this is lattice. Energy is equals to 5. So basically in general, delta H5 is equals to delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 plus delta H4 plus delta H L E. Ini yang you nak cari. Okay. Ah, inilah one hammer cycle. Okay. So you kira lah. So minta you kira juga kan. Kat sini ada silap sikit. Uh, ada segi ni sebenarnya nombor Allah. Uh, uh, sini eh mana tadi? Oh my god. This is actually number four right. So this is number two. Number three, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Takut to confuse pula kan. Ha. So, the value, ha, ni lah enter H. You nak cari is LE, lattice energy. Okay, clear eh? Okay, so kita patah balik. Tadi dia tak ada masalah kalau dia one to one ratio. Maksudnya um, nak uh, lattice tu dia one to one lah. Okay, kita ada juga contoh. Okay. MTCL2. Kalau MTCL2 kalau heat formation lah dulu eh. Dia akan jadi Mg solid plus Cl2 gas. This is solid. Kan? Tak ada half-half lah sebab Cl, Cl chlorine tu dia ada dua. And kalau dia lattice you akan dapat like this. Mg2 plus gas plus Cl minus kat sini 2 gas. Ha, ada lain sikit. Sebab apa? Kat sini ada 2. And kat sini 2 plus. So dia sama juga. Dia nak determine lattice energy. So this value lah. What is the delta H L E here? So okay. Again what is this? This is atomai right? Solid kepada gas. Gas kepada gas tapi molecule kepada atom. Again this is atomization. Okay. Mg kepada Mg plus. Dia buang elektron. So this is IE right? But here because Mg you have Mg2 plus. Of course you ada lagi satu Mg plus kepada Mg2 plus. So again this is also IE kan? Cuba bila dia ada different equation kat situ you have to be specific. So this is first IE so this is second IE. Okay so now what is this? This is EA. Sama jugalah eh EA pun kalau you ada dua first I, first EA second EA you have to be specific eh. And then what is this? The last one is delta HF formation eh. Allah oh, terpadam pula eh formation. Okay so kalau you tengok kat sini uh, it's a little bit complex when tiba-tiba je dia kena darat dua. Okay so I'm not really uh, saya tak apa suka untuk saya explain on this part first. Okay saya lebih suka kita pergi dulu pada von Haber cycle. Okay again kita tahu we have the main equation. Ni main kan? Okay this is the main equation where this is the delta HF and tepi number six. Mm. One, two, three. Okay, yang nombor enam eh, delta HF. Next. Okay, we have Mg solid to Mg gas, delta H1. This is atomization tadi. Okay, you nampak tak kat sini? This is Cl2 kepada 2Cl minus. You remember, I said you cannot change the main equation. Okay, main equation you is Cl2 kepada 2 Cl. Uh, Cl2 kepada Cl lah. Kan dah dapat gas. Okay, kita tahu equation asal kita half Cl2 kepada Cl. Atomization kan. But now you ada Cl2 sahaja. So untuk jadi Cl, you have to balance. Yang ini sekarang yang ini pula you tak boleh usik. So yang ini akan jadi 2 Cl. Okay, so basically this one, okay, saya padam balik, Cl2 kepada 2 Cl. 
Walaupun original dia adalah kita tahu dia half CL2 kepada CL kan. This is atomization right. Now if you go to CL2 kepada 2 CL, basically this is bond energy. And we know that bond energy is actually bila atomization you darab 2. Kan? Okay. So that's why kita tak boleh ubah this one. Yang kita ubah is this one. And automatically the value of delta H pun you kena darab 2. Okay. So this is the value. So this value basically tadi adalah value for bond energy. Tapi sebab information dia tak bagi bond energy. Dia bagi atomize. Eh, ini ke? Ah yes. Dia bagi atomization. Okay. Tapi yang kita nak adalah product dia 2 CL. Okay. So that's why you have to multiply by 2. Okay. So I hope you clear with this one. And then MG tak ada masalah lah. Cuma MG ni pula uh, IE dia ada 2 step. So you kena tambah step lah. Okay. So from NG gas kepada MG plus. So this is first IE. First IE. And then MG plus to MG to plus you have second IE. This one. Okay. And this CL kepada CL minus. So we know that original equation is CL kepada CL minus. Okay. CL plus electron. You dapat CL minus kan. The original one. Mana tadi? Okay. This one. This is the original. Okay, you tak boleh ubah kat uh, You equation ni dah kekal lah. This is the value. Yang you boleh ubah is sebab ni dah automatically 2 and jawapan pun memang later you nak 2 CL minus. Betul tak? Lattice energy kan? Equation lattice energy. Oh saya dah, dah terpadam eh. Equation lattice energy tadi is when mg 2 plus gas plus 2 CL minus gas produce mg CL2 solid. So you memang nak dua pun. Okay. So that's why 2Cl kepada 2Cl minus basically you tambah elektron. Tambah elektron kat sini. So sebabkan value dia dalam bentuk 1 mol. So you just darab 2. Berarti pula by 2. So you dapat 2. So nampak kat sini eh. Ada dua benda yang you kena darab 2. Cl. Dekat, dulu dekat part Cl lah. Okay. So again bila you dah dapat complete uh, seperti yang you nak dalam lattice energy punya equation Okay, you just letak tambah kat sini Okay, you tambahkan, you buat arrow naik ke atas ya. Uh, this is the value for lattice energy Okay, so bila you dah susun kat sini Again, sama je method dia delta H6 The final uh, value, uh, the main equation delta HF Yang you nak cari adalah lattice energy Okay so itulah explanation yang kita terangkan uh, for this pages, uh, for this page lah. Okay. Why you have to multiply by two for both this one. Okay. So untuk you kalau saya lah. Saya akan faham bila saya draw like this. Daripada saya terus kira darab dua tu kat mana. Saya takut silap lah. Okay. Okay. So. Cuba tengok checkpoint nombor 18 ni. Apa beza dengan checkpoint yang sebelum ni? The diagram below shows the bond have a cycle for sodium bromide and ABR. Okay. Tengok betul-betul diagram ni. Boleh faham tak diagram dia? Okay. Produk dia pada left hand side. Hmm. Ya yeah, betul. Dia terbalik. Okay. So saya ini saya rasa saya explain je lah. Selalu kan saya cakap uh, always draw. Okay. Letaklah uh, main equation dekat atas sekali. Uh, main pula. Main dia apa? Data HF kan. Where kita dapat Na solid plus half Br2. Okay. So Br2. Oh saya berperasan. Supposedly this one should be liquid eh. Saya buat pasal. Okay. Liquid. The standard lah eh. Standard equation. Tapi um, basically uh, here uh, the value of delta HF ni tak semestinya dia perlu buat ada di atas. Yang penting you faham macam mana you nak baca arrow tu. So in this case 
and ABR tu kat sini sebelah kiri on the left side and where is the delta HF? Is it delta H1? This is positive and negative charge. Okay so delta H4 uh, delta HF is basically is delta H2 kat sini. Solid half PR2. So terus kalau nak dah nampak terus lagi okay this is delta HF. This is your main main equation eh. Okay and then uh, how about delta H1 what is this? So bila tengok balik okay ada positive and negative charge. So basically this one is lattice energy. Okay and how about delta H3 ni? Cuba tengok daripada solid BR2 liquid ni tiba-tiba dia terus produce gas Na dengan BR. They combine together. We know that uh, before this normally kita asing kan solid kepada uh, K solid kepada K gas chlorine gas kepada chlorine gas. Atomization tapi kita separate. But for this uh, uh, contoh kat sini uh, these examples they combine. Nampak tak? They combine together and the information given also they combine. Nampak tak kat sini? Entropy atomization of Na and Br is this one. So basically this value is for both this one and this one. Na and Br. You tak boleh simply uh, bahagi dua. Tak boleh eh sebab kita tak tahu uh, Na berapa, Br berapa. Cuba dia dah campur, itulah value dia. 205. Okay. So bila you uh, kira you dapat lah macam dia eh. So value of delta H3. And uh, this one, Na kepada Na plus, so this is uh, E, right? And then Br kepada Br minus, this is Ea. And now they ask for, determine the ionization energy. Now they not this one. Delta H4. So basically, let us add again. Delta H, one electron affinity tadi, delta H, five entropy atomization, this one is delta H3. Entropy formation is delta H2. Yang kita nak is delta H4. Okay. Again, so once you dah determine who is the ionization energy, which one, delta H4. Okay. For me, instead of you uh, using this equation, delta H1 ni tadi lattice kan? This is lattice. I think better you put as delta H2 equals 2 because we know that this is entropy of formation. Okay, delta H2 is equals to delta H1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Kita ada sampai berapa eh? 5. Plus 5. Yang kita nak cari, this one. Ah, supaya tak silap. Yang penting ya, ya kita tahu apa yang duduk di sebelah kiri kat depan, this one is delta HF. Kalau you nak buat cara method ni, make sure delta H2 is negative value. Uh, bahaya sikit lah eh. Uh, so you guna cara biasa lah. Okay. So any question so far? Okay, saya nak habiskan sikit lagi. Uh, but before that any question for the bond hyper cycle? I think so far okay eh. It's just that you need to practice lah. Okay. Practice uh, sebab soalan dia boleh tanya macam-macam. Macam jadi -macam. kalau perasan check point 18 ni sebenarnya very different. Tak macam yang selalu kita tunjuk. Tapi as long as you, if you can really understand the um, flow, uh, you tahu, oh ini apa, ini apa, ini formation, ini affinity. Yang penting you faham that one and you faham concept dia is uh, all the series of reaction is equals to, it is the sum up of, uh, uh, the, oh sorry, the sum up of all the series of reaction is equals to entropy of formation. Okay. So the last subtopic is uh, basically this one is application. Kalau ikut saya nak suruh you all baca sendiri je. Okay but maybe sebab ada dalam slide so kita explain sikit lah. So renewable energy because we are talking about uh, energy okay which is heat. Sekarang ni kita baca cerita pasal heat tapi eh, heat to energy lah. Okay so uh, we uh, we should have uh, you should at least know the renewable energy as an alternative of the energy sources where the common one we use is the oil and gas right okay where that one is not uh, renewable energy okay so we we get this renewable energy from the natural 
resources, okay, such as sunlight, wind, rain, geothermal heat and waves and many more. Uh, cuba yang biasa, yang the common one is basically this two lah, right? Okay, so of course, uh, this uh, renewable energy will provide energy basically for electricity, for the air or water cooling or transportation. Even sekarang pun kita dah ada electric car, right? Electric car and just can uh, boleh charge just by you just put apa under the sunlight okay so of course the advantages uh, you have to know lah okay sustainable will never run out hopefully lah will never run out eh okay so of course they provide clean energy okay because they are non pollutant does not contribute to the greenhouse effect and global warming okay i think for for now it just that Mm, I'm not sure about the cost lah. For me, as for now, we can say that the cost is still quite high. Sebab kalau dia rendah, I think semua orang dah pakai solar panel, right? Okay. Mm, memang maybe kita boleh kata can reduce the cost of operation because we get it from the natural, natural resources. It just that bila benda tu dah siap dah jadi, end up dia still akan jadi mahal. Or maybe because um, permintaan kurang. So, bila permintaan kurang, so agak mahal. Maybe later lah uh, because you are the next generation. Mungkin zaman you tu, uh, semua orang dah pakai. For example ni, solar panel kan for solar energy. So, electric you dah tak payah-payah bil electric lah. Tak payah pening-pening dengan TNB apa. Uh, you boleh uh, can simply using the all, setiap orang ada solar panel. Saya dulu teringin nak nak pasang benda ni tapi mahalnya ya Allah. Okay so very expensive as for now. Maybe later not. Okay so so this solar energy basically converted uh, the solar radiation is converted to the heat. So daripada heat tu you akan dapat electric uh, energy. So that, that one is because of the movement of electrons lah yang releasekan heat tu. I think basically this one you boleh uh, just google okay all the Uh, um, more informative uh, apa informative uh, ataupun you nak dapat all the knowledge lah for this uh, solar energy eh. and we also have wind energy I mean these two are, are very common lah bukan common juga maksudnya yang kita selalu dengar as for now okay maybe yang lain-lain tu kita kurang sikit dengar even for wind energy pun ada pada certain country saja, eh. Okay, not like us. Maybe for solar, yes. Dah ada dah. Even kat Malaysia pun dah ada company yang buat solar panel. But for wind energy, um, because we have to find the suitable places lah, kan. So this one uh, is convert uh, from wind. Okay, wind turbines convert the kinetic energy related to the kinetic energy from the wind into mechanical. And then from that mechanical energy, you convert to the electrical. Again, you akan boleh juga um, get the electricity lah from this uh, wind energy for use for uh, untuk pumping water ke untuk apa-apa lah. Okay, ni yang the very basic one lah. Okay, the, uh, maybe yang latest saya pun tak berapa ingat, tak sure sangat. You boleh refer. You just search lah. Okay. Semuanya ada di hujung jari kan. Oh, nak cari senang je. Okay, so habis our uh, lecture for today even uh, this is uh, our uh, uh, we, apa our last lecture for this semester do you have any question so far for this topic ada soalan tak okey ni apa yang nak masuk ni semua kita dah habis dah okey any question so far ada benda nak tanya So far okay eh, for chapter, chapter 5. Mungkin you boleh try. Okay. Okay eh, okay. So um, because of this week is the last week, week 14. So uh, kita tak sempat nak bincang tutorial, the next tutorial. I mean for this section, for chapter, I mean for entropy sebuah tu kan. Nanti tengoklah macam mana eh. Tengok sama ada saya minta you all just submit your answers ataupun maybe I just give your uh, the answers. Uh, tengok macam mana lah. Sebab basically answers dah ada kan, tahu tak? 
uh, cuma nak tengok jalan kerja tu betul ke tak lah Or maybe if you have any question you can just ask me lah Sebab kelas kita memang akan habis until end of this week Next week tak akan ada kelas dah For all Itu memang minggu untuk you punya study week So um, whatever it is mesti habis by this week Kalau dapat kelas ganti ke apa by this week Okay it's just that next week um, Okay next week ke Um, Pak Evelyn eh nanti next week Kita ada buat uh, Biasanya every Every uh, Bukan every week, every semester kita akan ada Klinik Okay, klinik ni untuk orang-orang yang sakit lah Kan, orang yang sakit Sakit apa eh, bukan sakit covid eh Sakit kimia Klinik chemistry So before this Sebab ni first time ni kita buat klinik uh, Virtual Before this, klinik tu kita boleh jumpa face to face uh, Biasanya macam satu hari, satu hari kita bagi uh, Lecturer free on that day, you can come and ask lecturer any questions Regarding chemistry lah, okay uh, Regarding the final ke apa So kita akan just get ready lah And for this semester, ada juga um, Saya baru dapat tahu tadi, pagi And Uh, rasanya dia tu it depends on the lecturer Sama ada nak google meet atau anything uh, Cara apa-apa pun lah So I prefer I'm not going to have the google meet session Cuma sebab saya rasa lain orang lain problem dia Sometimes maybe ada orang ni dia nak uh, nak tanya soalan chapter 2 Orang ni nak tanya chapter 3 lah chapter 5 lah Okay so maybe for that whole day Saya akan buat announcement dan nanti dekat class chat punya group eh For the whole day I'm free when you want to ask something And I think maybe for the whole day pun susah I think I try lah If you want to ask anything you can just ask Cuma faham-faham uh, je lah eh Kadang-kadang uh, uh, lagi lah sekarang dah work from home kan Telefon saya tak kat mana-mana dah Okay so I try my best to reply Okay mana yang boleh lah And that one is for clinic Tak siap saya empat hari bulan 4 November Uh, itu kalau spesifik lah Kalau you nak hari lain pun bukanlah tak boleh tanya Boleh je And ada yang ada tanya saya soalan pasius Pasius question ada dalam buku Pada for those yang dah beli buku You akan perasan ada pasius uh, Few sets I think Kalau yang tak ada You boleh cari I think you all ni lebih cepat daripada saya kan Dapat je link-link untuk dapat pasius question Uh, ada juga kalau you tak tahu, you boleh juga buka dekat library YTM EQPS Kat situ boleh download Cuma of course lah soalan saja. Jawapan Dalam buku ada jawapan akhir Untuk pasiest Yang ada dalam tu lah Untuk yang tak ada uh, You can ask me Saya pun tak ada semua Tapi I can try uh, Untuk check Saya because the uh, We cannot give you the answers, uh, I mean the answer scheme Because uh, it's confidential Tapi cara dia is maybe you can share your answers with me And I can say that okay this is wrong uh, Which part yang wrong, which part is correct Okay kita boleh discuss kat situ lah Okay and one more thing Tomorrow you have another one hour class right For my uh, another class, uh, S31 and S32 uh, They want to have a revision class So besok saya akan buat revision untuk kelas tu uh, Maybe boleh tak saya tanya you all, you all free tak pukul 11? 11.12 You all punya kelas esok ke 12 kan? Um, pukul 11 tu ada kelas Pukul 10 sampai 12 ada kelas Easy. Oh okay so memang you all ada kelas lah kan So oh. tak apa uh, So kalau you all, uh, do you want extra class tomorrow? Basically uh, saya tanya student lah sebab student kelas yang sebelum ni dia nak Sebab saya cakap hmm, maybe kita buat pasius A few lah kita ada one hour je So maybe saya just pick randomly a few questions from chapter 2 until chapter 5 Maybe um, kalau sempat saya bagi soalan tu malam ni. Kalau tak sempat tak apalah besok kita buat sama-sama. Uh, do you want like that or you tak nak kelas? Macam mana? Kita decide sekarang. Kalau you nak kelas kita buat kelas. Kalau tak nak. 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 Okay. 
Uh, okay. Saya assume nak. Okay. So saya boleh cakap tomorrow's class is not compulsory. Kalau you nak join, you boleh join. Kalau you tak dapat join pun maybe uh, I try to record. Uh, cuma of course lah. Record ni kadang-kadang saya lambat sikit upload eh. Dekat YouTube tu. So kalau cuma kalau live session kalau you nak tanya directly terus soalan you boleh tanya time through kan. Okay. So besok kita buat lah eh. Um, more on revision chapter 2 until chapter 5. I just pick randomly from the past years. And then kita discuss. Kita buat sama-sama lah. Okay. So kalau tak ada apa-apa with that uh, I end. Officially I end. Uh, our... Yeah yeah yeah. Kalau yeah. in